you for earlier, Gloria. It was fun. Thank you, too. I had a really good time, Monica. Let's do another dinner party with everyone again. By the way, this is a little hard to say. Is something wrong? About your fiancé. What about John? What happened? That's not like you to beat around the bush. Yeah, this isn't like me. I'll be straightforward. Why didn't you tell us he was a lawyer? Huh? About John? Who else would it be? Why do I need to say that? It's not like it's necessary. You lied, didn't you? Lie? I didn't lie about anything. What are you talking about, sis? When I asked you about your fiancé, didn't you say he was an office worker? He is an office worker. He's a corporate lawyer, and he's also an office worker. I didn't lie about anything. But you still kept it a secret, didn't you? Why did you hide it? You didn't want me to know he was a lawyer? No, there was no reason to hide it. I wouldn't hide anything from my family. Why are you bringing this up? It's okay. I'm not angry or anything. You didn't want me to know, right? He has a law degree and a high income. And the company he works for is a good one, right? Did you investigate him already? Of course! He's the fiancé of my dear little sister! It's natural! So what? He's a lawyer, so what? I'm worried about you. Worried? About what? Do you know what it's like to be the wife of a lawyer? What is difficult? There's a lot to handle, like accounting and dealing with clients. Honestly, I don't think you could handle it. Oh, I see. Well, then it's okay. I told you before, but he's a lawyer and a company employee. We won't have to worry about that. No, it's not okay! Even though he's a company employee, he's still a lawyer. You need to be a highly educated and intelligent woman to match him. Who knows, he might even start his own business in the future despite being a company employee now. Well, that's true, but... See? It's not suitable for someone with a low education like you. What? Why are you suddenly saying that? Low education, again? You always bring up education every time. Education doesn't matter in today's world. What are you talking about? If you were to become a lawyer's wife, you wouldn't be able to handle it with your low education. I think it's more suitable for me, a college graduate with better looks than you. Well... Do you know why I'm saying these things? It's because I don't want to see my little sister's miserable future as an older sister. So I think he deserves someone like me who is a college graduate and beautiful, not someone like you. Here we go again. What do you mean, here we go again? Your rampage. What? What rampage? I'm just worried about you. If you're my little sister, you should listen to what your older sister says. You always do this, don't you? What do you mean by this? When I was a sophomore in high school, I dated the most handsome guy in the class, remember? What? When you were a sophomore? Oh, that guy. So what does that have to do with anything? In the end, he believed your lie that I had taken a friend's boyfriend. And one month later, he was dating you. I didn't lie. It's just that he switched to a pretty girl like me. Yes, he was stolen by you. The same thing happened when we were in junior high. When I was dating the top performing boy in our grade. What are you talking about bringing up stories from when we were kids? It's always been like that with you since we were young. That's slander! What should I do? At that time, you lied and said I had fallen ill on our date day. You canceled our date, remember? That's an old story. I don't remember. I heard that you went on a date with him and told him unfounded bad things about me instead of believing a lie that the date was canceled. Did I do such a thing? I don't remember. One month later, I heard everything from him who was dumped by you. You switched to his older brother who got into a famous university. He was crying. I don't remember such a thing. You don't like it when I date a guy who stands out a little. That's not true. It's natural that boys who have dated you would want to date someone cuter like me more than you. 
adolescent boys want to have sex with cute girls. I guess everything up to now was just a youthful mistake. But I'm engaged to John. It doesn't matter if he's a lawyer or not. As sisters, I want you to bless my marriage, please. You're such an idiot. I've been saying that all along, haven't I? Huh? I don't want my little sister to marry an unsuitable man and bring shame to the family. You are not suitable to be married to a lawyer like him. I am the one who is suitable for him. Wait, he is my fiancé, though. That doesn't matter. He's mine now. What are you talking about? Sean is going to marry me, a smart and beautiful woman. Do you really think it's okay to do something so irrational? Haven't you always been like this? Huh? You've never been good at anything, and I've always had to clean up your messes. That's not true. Your timid attitude is so embarrassing. Well, I used to be insecure about my height. I admit that I was timid back then, but now things are different. I have a wonderful fiancé, and I can introduce him to my family. I'm very happy now, sis. Can't you be happy for me, too? I don't like it! Huh? I don't like how you, who have always been a loser, are acting like a winner. Loser? Aren't we sisters? Don't say such things. I won't forgive this. Except for height, I have always been better than you. I won't allow you to marry a lawyer now. Wasn't it always like this? You were never good at anything, and I had to clean up your mess. Big sister. And now you're marrying a lawyer? I won't allow it. John is going to marry me. He'll understand, too. Do you even know what you're saying? Please calm down a little. Anyway, I'm the one who's more suitable for him. Hey, hey, Monica? Sorry about earlier. I had an emergency. What's wrong now, Monica? Hey, don't you want to know what my emergency was? What is it? I contacted John. Why? To thank him for today's event. Wait, stop it. Why? As your sister, it's natural to express my gratitude for family matters. If you don't have manners, you won't be fit for the lawyer's wife. Anyway, Jean really liked me. He raved about our parents, but especially about how much he liked me. He also talked about you. I'm the fiancé, but I'm just an afterthought, huh? You grew up surrounded by kind parents and a smart, beautiful older sister. You're a lucky girl, Gloria. He said you were smart and beautiful. That's good, isn't it? I knew it would come to this. What's with that attitude? What do you mean by I knew? You've always been aggressive towards guys you're interested in, haven't you? That's why I thought you'd also contact Jean. I told him to be careful, too. What do you mean by be careful? Ah, uh, I contacted him as a family member. Monica, you were pretty clear earlier, weren't you? That you thought you were more suitable for Jean? Did I really say that? Hey, can we stop this kind of thing already? What do you mean, this kind of thing? It's abnormal for a sister to take her sister's fiancé. Take is a bad word. So it's not that? W well It was just my misunderstanding? Can I believe you, Monica? Ugh, you're so annoying. What are you trying to say? I'm not going to ask why you contacted John earlier. I'm really curious, but I'm trying not to worry about it. So... So what is it already? You're being roundabout and it's frustrating. Just get to the point. I don't want you to contact Jean anymore. Please, Monica. Why are you so worried, Gloria? Oh, I see. You think I've stolen all the desirable men from you since we were young? That must make you anxious, huh? <laughs> That's so funny. It's ridiculous. Hey, Monica, listen to me instead of laughing. Oh, right. It's about the wedding. Huh? The wedding? Ah, oh, you're so slow. You really haven't changed since we were young. It's about John's wedding. Ah, oh, sorry. It's about the wedding, isn't it? I was getting off track with the conversation. But you understand, Monica. I'm happy. Is there something wrong with Jean and my wedding? 
Just leave everything to Jean's mom. She's apparently quite tasteful and arranged everything. Huh? Jean's mom? What does that mean? You really are slow. She said to leave it to her because Jean's mom arranged everything. Hold on a second. I don't understand. Why would Jean even tell you that? He said he can talk to me about anything. He trusts me. Don't tell me. You... Anyway, just leave the wedding stuff to Jean's mom. Oh no. I've always dreamed of getting married and having a wedding. I even designed a dress that would fit my height, and I was thinking about the venue too. Oh, just stop thinking about it. You always worry about unnecessary things. You're such a fool. Just leave everything to his mother. What? But it's my wedding. That's why. I'm saying that if we leave it to his mother, it will become a wonderful wedding. It's definitely better than what an amateur like you would come up with. But even his mother is not an amateur. Enough already! But can't I at least design the dress, please? You're such a fool. Just shut up and do as you're told. Hey, Monica. You're so selfish. Good morning, Gloria. What a nice weather we have. It's like the weather is celebrating the wedding. Good morning, Monica. Sorry, I'm a bit busy right now. Can we talk later? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just couldn't help laughing. It was so funny that I started crying. What's so funny? I wonder what you're so worried about? Oh, sorry. That was mean of me to ask. The door won't open, right? It's tough, even on the day of the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is too funny. I can't stop laughing. Do you know why the door won't open? Of course. Jean and I wrapped the front of the door with a chain in the middle of the night. It was tough because it was cold, you know. Why would you do something like that? You really are stupid. I did it because I didn't want you to come to the wedding. You'll be staying at home today. It's okay. I'll be there as the bride. You know, to bless myself. Huh? It's too bad that you can't attend your older sister's wedding. As a younger sister, you wanted to congratulate me, right? You can give me your wedding gift some other time. Actually, I don't even need it. I'll be living happily with my husband, who is a lawyer and earns a good income, in our rich life together. I see. Oh? Why are you suddenly quiet? What's wrong? I knew it. I knew something like this was going to happen. What? You're just pretending to be smart, aren't you? Something only a stupid person with low education would do. I'm telling you because you'll never understand. Jean's heart already belongs to me. So, when did you start dating him? Are you curious? We had a family dinner together, remember? And right after that, once I told him I had liked him for a long time, he immediately decided to switch to me. Of course, he would choose a beautiful woman with a higher education rather than a plain-looking girl with no sense of direction. It was right after our first date. Sean is quite sexually active, isn't he? But it's wonderful. I like that he has a heroic side to him. Oh, and his family are also in favor of the change of wives. Even his parents? Of course. Did you really think I wouldn't do anything about it? Both of his parents and I are of average height, so it's strange that only you have a tall height, don't you think? What are you talking about? I'm saying maybe you have different genes. Or else it could be some kind of illness, don't you think? Does Gloria have some genetic abnormality that causes infertility or something? You're my precious little sister, so I didn't want to say something like that, but... And I don't want to be told later that you were deceived, you know? But his parents also said that you were better suited for him, right? That's right. It's a shame. But, and that's not all. Unlike your sister, you seem like you could give birth to smart and cute children. And his mom said so. Jean also wholeheartedly agreed with her. Is that so? His mom was really excited about it. She seemed to like you more than Jean. I see. So, that's why. It's a big victory for me that we're getting married. I was wondering what to do when you brought your lawyer boyfriend, but in the end, I won. After all, there's no way you could beat me, right? You're too ugly and too tall and embarrassing to even come to the wedding. I don't know what to do about adding you to the family. 
Yes, it would be a great help. Thank you very much. Huh? Did I hear that right? I think I heard thank you. I did say thank you. I'm very grateful. B -b -b what? What are you saying? Have you lost your mind? You're pretending like that's not true. Are you still saying that? Well, but what do you mean? I'm saying thank you for marrying him. You're welcome. No, that's not it. Have you really lost your mind? Actually, I knew that you and John were dating. Huh? You confessed right after he introduced you and then slept with him, right? So what does that have to do with anything? Around that time, I heard some rumors about John. Rumors? Something about him being a mama's boy. Wh what kind of baseless rumor is that? You're so stupid for believing something like that. Honestly, people with low education levels are just the worst. Who is spreading such rumors about him? It's friends who know him from his child's school. They say he's being controlled by his great mom, and that's why he's broken up with all of his past girlfriends. Huh, so what if he has one or two flaws? Everyone has them. As expected of you, Monica. People with high education levels really do think differently. N no it's not that impressive. By the way, there's another flaw he has. Two flaws are okay, right? Huh? It's not just being a mama's boy? It's a recent story, but he suddenly hit me during our home date. We weren't even fighting, so I didn't understand what was happening. What the hell is that? I talked to a childhood friend of his about it. She said that ever since he was little, his mother would get physical if he disagreed with her. She also said that because his mom is so overprotective, he may be emotionally immature. I never heard anything like that. Well, you and John never told me about your relationship or engagement either, let alone that you're dating. Oh, I see. Even my dependable older sister couldn't say, I'm dating my sister's fiancé. I'm going to steal the bride's seat at the next wedding. Wow, how lovely. To tell you the truth, I was just pondering whether I should really marry Jean or chase after my own dream until a moment ago. What dream are you talking about? You don't have any dreams bigger than marrying into a wealthy family, do you? I've decided to chase my dreams thanks to you marrying Jean. That's why I came to say thank you. That's a fraud, isn't it? Fraud? Why? Didn't John and his mom say they preferred you, the beautiful one, to have their cute children? Th that's true, but he's a mama's boy and a husband who abuses me. What should I do? What can you do? The wedding is almost here, right? Huh? Already? Good luck with the wedding. Mom, Dad, and I will be there to bless you. Huh? Where are you right now? At home. What? Why? Didn't I make sure you couldn't leave last night? Mom and Dad came to my rescue last night. Wait, you mean even Mom and Dad know about this? Of course. I told them everything. Um, what did they say about me? Mom was disappointed in you for your bad habit, and Dad was angry, not just at you, but also at that dishonest guy, Jean. What? That's why neither of them will attend today's ceremony. What? It's my special day! Do you even realize what you've done? No relatives will be attending. Oh, isn't it time for you to go to the dressing room? What? Is it that late already? Well then, I don't want to hear about how the wedding went. No need to report back to me. Hey, Gloria! Respond when someone talks to you! What's up? The wedding is over already? How was Jean's mom-produced wedding? Was it fun? Fun? It was so damn boring! Oh, can you say that about a wedding that your mom with good taste produced? What? Good taste? I was fooled! The dress was ugly and the content was all outdated! With your beauty, you could have made any dress work, even if it was a bit ugly. It wasn't that level! It was yellowed and smelly! Unbelievable! Is that so? <laughs> Don't laugh! We don't have any family or relatives around here, and I feel embarrassed about it. And the worst part was that entertainment. How much did they spend on that boring entertainment? Seriously, the worst. Even though he's a lawyer, he has money, right? They should have at least had a more luxurious wedding. By the way, I'll tell you something. 
His parents are supposed to be quite wealthy. Then all the more reason! It's their precious son's wedding, so they should spend more money! I told you before, didn't I? Sean is completely under his mom's control. For her, the bride is nothing more than a woman who took away her precious son. She won't spend a single yen for her. Sean probably isn't thinking about anything. He believes that mom is always right, so no matter how wrong she is, he thinks she's right. If you argue with her, she'll come back with violence. I can't handle being the wife of a deviant man like that. You're right. Sean's wife is way more suitable for you than me. It's a bit unfortunate, but I'll tell you something else. They're planning to move near his company after the wedding. What? Isn't that a good thing? I heard that after getting married, we'll be moving near his company. That's great, isn't it? And since it's near his company, it's also close to his parents' house, right? Huh? Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yep, mom's going to come over every day. Every day? Are you kidding me? Oh, well, I guess I should have listened to my older sister. It was a good idea to get legally married after the wedding ceremony. From the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful. If you hadn't stopped me from doing something foolish and inappropriate, I'd be regretting it right now. Well then, do your best. Hey, Gloria, I need you to take responsibility for this. It's really serious, so you need to respond quickly. Wow, you're being pretty forceful. What's going on? We might be sued by Jean. What should we do? It's all your fault. Don't get so worked up. What are you talking about? Being sued by a lawyer doesn't sound calm at all. It's not calm, even if it's not a lawyer. It's all because of that old hag. You're getting too frustrated. Instead of complaining, can you explain what happened? I can't understand what you're saying. Ah, uh, every time I think about it, it makes me so angry. That old hag comes over every single day, even though she has no reason to be here. I was so frustrated that... It started as a small argument, but it turned into a physical fight. Wait, did you hurt her? Even if she's a despicable person, she's still elderly, you know? I know, it wasn't intentional. So, it wasn't intentional, right? I mean, she just fell on her own, right? So she got injured and you caused it? How serious is the injury? She has a broken wrist. That's outrageous. So... You got into a fight with an elderly person and caused them a serious injury, and now you might get sued. You brought this on yourself, didn't you? That's not all. Sean was horrible to me. As soon as he got home, he slapped me. Can you believe it? He hit me! Didn't I tell you he was a mama's boy and a domestic violence perpetrator? He really is the worst. I'm glad I gave him up to you. And on top of that, can you believe what that mama's boy said? Marrying you was a big mistake. I want to remarry your sister. Can you believe it? He wants to dump me and marry you! Me? Marry him? The scumbag who betrayed his fiancée right before the wedding and then wanted to marry his fiancée's sister? It's really unbelievable. So, do something about it! You're not gonna marry him, are you? Of course not! Stop underestimating me! There's no way I'm marrying that damn bastard! Tell your beloved mother who made the mistake of choosing such a failure of a wife that. I can't believe you're getting so angry about this. They're really the worst, that mother and son, aren't they? Can't you do something about it? Like, sue them? You're pretty terrible too, you know. Can't you just drop it already? W what We're sisters, aren't we? We're supposed to help each other. I've been holding back because we're sisters. But you stole your little sister's fiancé, didn't you? And now you're talking about helping each other? How can you say that? Shut up! I'm divorcing that damn man! You pay for the medical bills! What are you talking about? I have nothing to do with this! You do! You didn't tell me that Jean was such a scumbag! It's punishment for deceiving me! You pay for the medical bills! If you're really my big sister, you should know that I'm not at fault. You're being so selfish and shameless. You're so highly educated and smart, aren't you? But what How can my little sister say that? Well then, don't contact me anymore. This is unbelievable. 
Hey, Gloria, answer me! You're an accomplice, too! What is going on exactly? You're so loud. That damn family! After the divorce, they're demanding two million yen for medical expenses? Oh, did you get divorced? Well, that's good news. You wanted to break up with that mama's boy, right? The divorce is not the problem. It's the medical expenses. I can't afford it, you know? Besides, I didn't do anything wrong. It's a fact that you pushed her and caused the injury, isn't it? Just give up and pay for it. No way! I refuse! You're the one who deceived me! That's why! You're the one who has to pay for the medical expenses! Are you still talking about that? Ugh, that wedding was such a disaster. I thought I hit the jackpot marrying into a rich family. But then my mother-in-law comes over every day to our new house. And Joan's days off are spent with her too? I've been putting up with it. But once I started talking back, I couldn't stop. Sean never takes my side or helps me out in any way. So you got into a fight and hurt someone? N no it's not like that. Y you're the one at fault. Yes, you deceived me. Pay up now. Hey, calm down. Can't you try talking to mom and dad about it? What? You'll pay for me? Of course not. I mean, why don't you ask for their advice? It's not that you don't want to pay, it's because you don't have the money, right? I don't need you to tell me that. I talked to them right after the divorce. What did mom and dad say? Dad was so cruel. He said, there's no place for someone who steals their sister's fiancé. You've always been so selfish, but this time you've gone beyond that and become unreasonable. You're no longer part of this family. I can understand why he would say that. He was really angry. Why are you so indifferent? I'm in big trouble here. I don't have any money and nowhere to stay tonight. You have to let me stay at your place. You wouldn't say no to your little sister, right? Oh dear, that's terrible. You have nowhere to stay? How dare you talk back to me, little sister? I'm on my way to your place right now. Sorry, but I won't be there. What? Where are you right now? When are you coming back? I'm in a foreign country. Huh? You're in a foreign country? What are you doing there? I'm on a long-term filming project. Shoot? What are you talking about? Actually, a few months ago, I was scouted by a modeling agency. Shortly after starting my career, I passed an audition for a famous overseas brand, and now I'm busy with daily shoots. I don't understand what you're saying. Model? Overseas? What about me who has no money or job? I don't even have a place to stay tonight. Don't worry, if you use your beautiful face and body, you'll figure something out. Do your best, and I'll do my best too. Wait a minute. Why is it always you? Why am I the only one suffering like this? Take care, Monica. Let's both find good partners next time. Since then, Monica apparently borrowed money to pay for the medical treatment. She's now working at a night job to pay off her debt, but Monica is too proud to let it be. She talked to Jean's former boss and picked a fight with him. She hired a lawyer who was a colleague at the same company and took him to court. And as a result, we succeeded in getting back at Jean. We exposed him for leaving me, his fiancé, to marry Monica, her sister. We revealed how he's an extreme mama's boy who lets his mother decide everything for him and how he's a tyrant who resorts to violence when he doesn't like something. The whole company found out about it. John's bad reputation even spread to the Bar Association. As a result, the company abandoned him. Well, it's not surprising, is it? Lawyers are something that won't do business if they lose their credibility, and there are no companies that hire a man with a bad reputation. So, they say he's just staying at home with his beloved mother. That's pretty ironic, isn't it? Meanwhile, as for me, I was selected as the image girl for a major corporation where Sean used to work. There's a huge picture of me in the company building. I wonder what he and his mom, who are freeders and have no money to move, think when they see me every day. Hi, I'm Sophie. And you? Well, you must be the wife. Huh? Sorry, but who are you looking for? Have we met before? I don't think I know your name. It's the first time I've met you. You're Tad's wife, aren't you? Oh, yes, yes I am, but who are you? 
Well, this might come as a shock to you, but here is my request. I want you to break up with Tad. I'm dating Tad. You are what? You're dating him? What do you mean you are dating him? He is my husband. Are you saying you are having an affair with my husband? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's been quite a few months already. He has promised to marry me. A promise of marriage? Do you know what you are saying? He is a married man. I am his wife. Yes, I know, I know. But Tad and I are also in a serious relationship. Honestly, Tad does not know I'm contacting you right now. The other day while Tad was taking a shower at the hotel, he received a line message from you on his phone. So I sent your contact information to my phone. Wait, at the hotel? What? I can't believe what you're saying to me. It makes me sick. Tad, you were lying. You sound so surprised, and yet Tad complains about his marriage life to me almost every day. What you might not realize is that when you talk about work, it sounds like you're constantly bragging. Don't you realize how stressful that is to him? He has always felt he was being looked down upon. Well, I didn't mean to. You are a graduate of a famous elite university and you work for a big company that everyone knows, right? And I hear you're in a position of some power. So if he has to hear such sarcastic bragging from you every day, he's not gonna like that, sweet Tad. Any good wife would change her job, maybe something more suitable like a part-time job, a stay-at-home mom. At least then you'll be able to pay more attention to your husband and his image. I have never wanted to be nasty or condescending. I'm working with the career I've built up so far. Yes, I work hard, but it is to make our family life easier. Tad isn't looking for an easy life. What he wants is to be free from you. I'll say it again. Get divorced. No, I don't want a divorce. Let me assure you, Tad is very happy when he's on a date with me. But as soon as he gets home, he's so gloomy, it's as if he needs to report a mistake to his boss. You know what? It's painful for him to see you. When he is with me, he can relax, have fun, a life of dates and presents. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you went on a date with Tad? The last time I went on a date with Tad was... You can't even remember, can you? Tad takes me to his favorite shops and fancy restaurants almost every day, and he showers me with gifts. Are you saying Tad is with you every day? He comes home late every night saying he's so busy at work. We rarely go out together. I assumed it was because he is so tired, even during the holidays. Before we got married and as newlyweds, we used to date, travel, and get gifts. You still don't understand? Coming home late because he is supposedly at work is just a disguise for his cheating time. Well, I realize that now. It's just, I just believe Tad. You didn't believe it. You were naive. You probably speak so little at home. The bare minimum. So wrapped up in yourself, you didn't even notice his suspicious behavior. He is having an affair right under your nose and you didn't even realize it. That's... No, I see that now. <laughs> I guess so. All his hard-earned cash he spends on me. No matter how you think about it, Tad doesn't have feelings for you anymore. He's preoccupied with me. He has no love for you. He cheats on you every day. Surely that's reason enough for a divorce, right? Just think about it. Well, I must go see Tad. I'll talk to him. Yes, well... I will be right here waiting. Tad, we need to talk. What's up, Claire? I'll just come out and say it. You're cheating, aren't you? Uh... No, no, what are you talking about? Saying such a stupid thing. Someone named Sophie contacted me. She's asking me to divorce you. Uh, Sophie? Why does she have your contact information? When you went to the hotel with her, she was able to see your phone screen. Oh, I see. 
Well, I guess there's no point in denying it. I'm sorry, I lied. But the truth is I love Sophie. So, Claire, I want you to break up. So it's true. We are married and you have feelings for another woman? I don't understand how that woman, too, could be so unfeeling and mess with someone's husband. I don't understand it at all. Don't say anything bad about her. You must have realized there was something wrong with you. Are you really going to protect that woman? Claire, I wanted to have children, but it's been eight years since we've been married and still nothing. My mother always told me, if you can't have children, give up sooner than later or you're just wasting your time. I begged my mother not to say anything to you about children. I didn't want you to know. I thought I was getting along with your parents. You have always been so stressed out from all the running around for work that you couldn't have kids. You're wrong. Yes, it's hard work, but it's also a lot of fun. And if you get pregnant, do you think it will be easy for you as a manager to stay at home or at least take a break? Sophie is still young and wants to be a stay-at-home mom. We will have a good environment for raising our children. As a man, it's always better for my image to be with a beautiful and young woman. It is one thing for you to go so far as to say it's me, my body, my lifestyle that makes it difficult for me to conceive and give you children. But that's not all there is to this, is it, Tad? You feel I'm looking down on you, isn't that the truth? Yes, yes it is the truth. When I come home tired from work, you tell me stories and experiences at work that I have no idea of. It has been hard for me. It was as if you were saying, you don't know about all these things, you incompetent man. I don't think so at all. I love my job and I just keep working because I could travel, save up for my kids, and make life a little easier. So what? Trust me, there's nothing attractive about a woman who looks down on a man. It's different with Sophie. She relies on me in that respect. The man stands in the front. The wife takes a step back and she follows. It's exactly the way it should be. I see. Oh, you don't know what it feels like. My parents keep asking me, when will we have our first child, their first grandchild? But I've kept it to myself for eight years. My mom was right. It's a waste of time. That's so terrible. You can't say that. Then it would have been so much better if you had just divorced me quickly, written it off to a personality disagreement or anything else. But why cheat on me? If I just divorced you with no explanation, what would you have been? If I never gave you the opportunity to have a family, what would I look like? You would just be a lonely old businesswoman. Besides, I was in love with you once. At least in this way I did it with mercy. I gave you a chance. Oh, don't say that! I won't believe you for a minute saying you only thought of me. But I'm glad I heard your true feelings today. Now we can get divorced without any regrets. Oh, yes. I'm glad you understood. So let's move on to divorce. Claire, you agreed to get a divorce? Wow, news travels fast. Yes, Tad informed me that he had just agreed to divorce you. So when will the divorce be finalized? If you need any proof of cheating, I'll give it to you and I'll pay you alimony. What is this? You are weirdly supportive. It's creepy. Well, I am the one who asked you to divorce him, and I want it finalized as quickly as possible. I want to marry him. Tad is needed in the company. He is about to get a promotion, and he is making a good amount of money, so he'll pay it off soon. Oh, you look surprised. You had such a cold relationship with Tad. I see you didn't know that. Yes, well, thank you for informing me on these things. I will inform the president of the other side. You mean the president of Tad's company? What do you mean? The company I worked for is an important client of Tad's company, and we are currently working on the teams with each other to sign a big contract, and I'm the one to make the final decision. I'm going to have to call off this deal and all the ones we've had. Naturally, Tad would be fired as a matter of responsibility. I didn't know about that! You should do the right thing and get out of the company. You're so selfish. 
Why? I'm not doing anything wrong. This is just something I have to do. Well, you threaten all you want. We have a reserve, some savings. I guess Tad expected something like this to happen. When he leaves his current company, he is going to start a new business. Soon it will be bigger than your company. Oh, I am sure. More than our company. I hope it works. Hi, ex-wife. I filed the marriage registration with him today. We officially became a couple. Well, congratulations. Thanks! We're well prepared to start our own business. Sure, we are living with Tad's parents at the moment. But hey, I'm sure all my dreams will come true. Soon we will live in the tower mansion, on the top floor. If that's where we'll end up, I could put up with living with my in-laws for a while. And we're going to have our wedding in Dubai. If you insist, we can invite you to Tad's friend's table, okay? Oh, can you afford that? Isn't it impossible to have a ceremony with only relatives nearby? Are you sure about your facts? What are you talking about? Are you jealous? You are so envious of us. No, I am not. The fact is, Tad is in debt. It's not an easy amount to pay back. Tad in debt? What are you talking about? He is rich enough to have a tower mansion. That tower mansion was originally mine. Oh, yours? What are you talking about? The restaurant Tad's parents were running for 10 years went bankrupt. I rented out a room in my tower mansion because they didn't have a place to live. When we were talking about property distribution, we were going to divide the tower mansion to Tad, the house to me, but just before we changed the name of the tower mansion, it was discovered that Tad had wasted a ridiculous amount of money. Extravagance! No way! Yes, just as you imagined. And he used to embezzle company money to pay for dates and gifts for you. So you are also involved in embezzlement. Why? I just got what he gave me. And Tad didn't put any salary into the family budget. He used all the family savings and his parents' money for himself. Of course, that is added to the alimony. And I've already informed his company that the perpetrator of the embezzlement is Tad. I heard he had taken out a significant amount of money to fund his new startup before he was fired. The company will sue him on both criminal and civil charges. Hey, if you do that, we'll end up with a ridiculous amount of debt. Well, it depends on the upcoming trial, but it's going to be a huge amount of money. Oh, by the way, on top of this, plus the alimony for the affair against you, it's going to be a lifelong debt for the two of you. That's why your dream of living in the Tower Mansion is unfortunately not going to come true. Sophie, you did such a devious thing to a woman's husband, but what a shame that you couldn't be a rich man's wife. Such an extraordinary amount of money, and I'm not even working. I thought I could live on his earnings, and I used up my savings. So, why don't you work for a little bit? You know, I have many connections I could introduce you to. No thanks, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. I see. Well, I'm a stranger now, so it's none of my business. Oh, will you tell Tad's parents? Tawaman's rent is fine, but I lent him 51,000 US dollars during the bankruptcy process. Could you tell them to refund me on that as soon as possible? Hey, you've got to be kidding me! Don't add to my debt anymore, please! It seems there are only two options left for you. You either get angry or cry. Oh yes, one last thing. There is more? Come on! In reality, you're the wrong person to get angry with. This is all the result of what Tad and his parents did. So, have you heard that we never had kids? Yeah, I've heard about it. For the divorce mediation, I went to the hospital to find out the cause. It turns out I am healthy, but Tad was the one who was the cause of us not having children. Oh no! It can't be true! We're so deep in debt, and we can't even have children? I'm totally out of luck! Well, I guess you can't be expected to have kids if you're so deep in debt and with Tad's little problem. Well, that's it, Claire. I'm divorcing Tad. You're a smart girl. You must have a good idea for divorce, right? Yeah, why don't you have an affair with Tad? 
That way you can leave Chad and add a little to the negative amount of your property division. What are you talking about? Why should I do that for you? I will make sure you get your payment for taking my husband away from me. Oh no. Chad was sued with both criminal and civil charges by the company and owed a tremendous amount of money. To be honest, I knew he wasn't putting any money into the house and that he was spending the family savings, but I didn't know about the money his parents were sending him and the embezzlement until right before the divorce. I thought it was just a small addition to the alimony due to the division of property, but the fact that they brought all this destruction on themselves due to the lawsuit was more than I expected. I'd like to think that he is indeed sorry. Ted was a bit of a slow reader and didn't have much knowledge of how to set up a business in the first place. He was so bad at getting to the point that he even had trouble finding a new job, let alone starting up a business. He is now living in a small apartment with his parents, desperately trying to pay off his debts. Sophie tried to leave Tad, but her in-laws would never forgive her because she was the source of the problem. Even so, they said she fled from the house, almost running away in the night. Sophie's family has been told the whole story, and she is unable to return to her parents' house. They don't know who to turn to or where she is. By the way, for my part, I was able to successfully sign a contract with Tad's company because they were able to fire him and hang the culprits before I could refuse. At my current company, I was promoted thanks to my past performance and this case. It's going to get busier and busier, but I am looking forward to it because I love my job. Hello, Lily. Excuse me, but... Who are you? I'm Helen. Didn't Peter tell you? Oh, you're his mistress, aren't you? Why did you call me? Do you need anything from me? Are you surprised by my sudden call? Yes, but... I'm sorry. I need to tell you something. What? Please stop bugging me. What do you mean? Don't play dumb. When will you divorce Peter? I'm waiting for you. Oh, about that. I'm fine with divorcing him any time. Wait, why do you know my number? When I was checking Peter's phone, I found your number. Lily, I feel sorry for Peter, because you're fretful saying you don't want to divorce him. He was having trouble. You're wrong. Our discussion doesn't go smoothly because of him. He's reluctant to have discussions. I'm having trouble. I can't understand why you want to marry a man who cheats on his wife and avoids discussion. Ha ha ha! Don't you think he cheated on you because of your own fault? What? Peter complained that you started nagging him right after you two got married. It doesn't matter to me if you have discussions or not, just please divorce him right away. You know what? I was just following household rules which we'd set when we got married. Did you say this is my own fault? What in the world? Those who cheat on their partner are responsible for everything. Huh. That's why you get cheated on. Don't you get it? Peter and I were friends when we were little, but we'd grown apart since we started working. But when I met him at your wedding, I realized something was wrong with him. I felt sorry for him, so we started keeping in touch. He's talked to me about a lot of things since then. Oh, really? I didn't ask how you two met, though. He seemed to have many complaints about his marriage, you know. So, when I was listening to him, I thought I could make him happier. We started dating about six months after your wedding. What? Six months? That's right. I knew he had been cheating on me, but six months is too soon. That's true, lol. But Peter seemed happier being with me than with you, lol. I see. I'll be 32 soon, so I want to have children. You would understand that as a woman, wouldn't you? So please divorce him immediately. Are you okay with it? Of course I am. Why? 
Are you trying to not admit your failure? No, I'm not. Please. Bye, then. Peter, can we talk now? What? I received a call from a woman named Helen. From Helen? She asked me to divorce you immediately. Uh, I see. Why does she know your number? She said she checked your smartphone. Anyway, you want to divorce me, right? Y yes I also want to divorce you immediately, so let's talk about it. If I just have to sign divorce papers, I can do it any time. Did you say just sign? You always come back home late at night and ignore me and stay in your room until the morning when I try to discuss our divorce. We're never going to get anywhere with this. We can't get divorced like this. Do you know that? I mean, if we don't distribute our property and I don't have to pay alimony, I'll sign the papers today. How can you say such a selfish thing? You're the one who cheated on me, remember? Do you understand the situation? That's what I don't like about you. What? When we were going out, you weren't nagging me like that. You started complaining about things after we got married. It's your fault I cheated on you. Are you kidding me? The wife should save the husband's face. A person like you who always complains is the worst as a wife. I had been nagging you because you broke the agreement that we made when we got married. Shut up! Can you imagine how I felt every time you nagged at me after I came home from work? It was your fault, wasn't it? Anyway, I can't let you do whatever you want. We have to talk. If we're going to talk, no lawyers. Otherwise, I will never discuss it. Okay. If it's just the two of us, it'll be selfish and we're not going to get anywhere. Then how about asking my friend to take part? Your friend? Yes, Miguel. Do you remember? He attended our wedding, too. Well, a friend might be fine. Okay. That's great. But we can't ask him to come right now, so is it okay to just sign the divorce papers for now and have a discussion later? Fine. Helen, I have good news. Hi, Lily. What is it? Peter and I got divorced yesterday. We haven't discussed details yet, but I'll charge you alimony. Oh, really? Thank you for divorcing him. Peter and I could finally submit a notification of marriage. Oh, you knew? Because Peter called to tell me how happy he is. You know what, Lily? I've been dreaming of getting married, having the most gorgeous wedding, and building a new house of my own. Thanks to you divorcing him finally, my dreams are finally coming true. Thank you so much! You're Peter's ex-wife. It's some kind of coincidence that we met. I'll invite you to our wedding, so please come. Wedding? Duh. <laughs> Stop joking. I didn't have anything to do with you, and I don't want to keep in touch with you, so I'll turn that down. That's too bad. We got to know each other, so can we be friends? No, thank you. If you keep saying such unfriendly things, no one will be attracted to you, lol. By the way, we're going to go look at the house now. We'll borrow your car because we don't have one. What? We haven't even finished talking about the distribution of property. The car is mine. I can't believe you use it without my permission. But you're alone now, so you don't need it, do you? How about giving it to us as a wedding gift? Why should I celebrate the marriage of my ex-husband who cheated on me and you who is a stranger to me? <laughs> Are you jealous because you got your husband stolen? That's why you're so stingy, lol. I'm not jealous at all. I'm saying I don't want you to use my car without my permission. And do you have enough money to buy a house when you'll be charged alimony? No problem, because Peter will take out a housing loan. Oh, I wanted to ask you to exempt the alimony. What? Are you serious? Because you'll be on your own from now, but we have a lot of things to think about. We have to buy furniture and household appliances that match the house and prepare stuff for our future children. 
That's not my problem. I'm charging you alimony. Just like what Peter told me, you're stubborn and persistent. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Looks like we arrived at the house. Well, we're busy, so see you later. Hey, wait, Helen! Bye! Peter, where are you now? I'm getting a cup of coffee at a convenience store nearby. Oh, please come here soon. I'm having a discussion that I don't want to. You could wait a little longer. All right, then please come here as soon as possible. By the way, Lily. What? You're not with a lawyer now, are you? No, I'm not. I'm with my friend. And he's a lawyer, though. He knows the situation already, and he was willing to help me without getting paid, so I didn't hire a lawyer. What? Wait, what's that? About what? Don't play dumb. You didn't tell me that your friend is a lawyer. Huh? Are you serious? During his speech at our wedding, he introduced himself and said that he is a lawyer. Don't you remember? Don't give me that crap. You promised to me that you wouldn't let a lawyer take part, didn't you? What crap? I thought you agreed because you remember who Miguel is. I don't remember your friends. Besides, you're the one who told me to invite my well-educated friends to our wedding because you worried about keeping up appearances. That's why I invited him even though I knew he was busy. Why don't you remember him? I don't remember the past. Well, Peter, please put an end to our discussion. Miguel is a very busy person. Today he canceled an appointment to be here for our discussion, so I want you to come here right away. It doesn't matter to me. You're responsible for everything because you broke our promise. How can you say such a thing even though you've broken our rules over and over? Uh, I didn't break the rules because I wanted to. Because you nagged at me without thinking about my feelings. I see. You're saying that was also my fault? I may take this opportunity to tell you clearly. I'll make you pay all the money you have spent while going out with Helen. Alimony and money for the car if you take it with you. What? Why do I have to pay you the money I spent while going out with her? Did you ask me why? Do I have to explain such an obvious thing? The credit card that you've been using while going out with her is my family card, which means I paid for everything. Of course I'm going to charge you for it. You cheated on me and spent the money without my permission. Wait, if you go that far, I'll have nothing left. So what? Do you want to ask me not to charge alimony? You say the same thing Helen did. Don't say that it was my fault to be cheated just like she did. No, that's... Oh, some things will be left for you. What? A lovely mistress whose name is Helen and debt will be there for you. Don't talk rubbish. Are you making fun of me? If it offended you, I'm sorry. Anyway, let your friend Miguel leave. Otherwise, I won't have a discussion. Oh, really? Then I have an idea. What? I'll tell Miguel that you walked away again. No, I didn't walk away. I'm just asking you to make your friend leave. Yes, so not as a friend, but as a lawyer, I will let him charge you alimony, so be prepared. What? Wait a minute. Then, bye, Peter. If you change your mind, come over right away. We can't wait for long. Really, you! Hey, what's up? I heard from Peter. It's unfair to betray him and let a lawyer take part. He seemed to be hurt. What are you talking about? Miguel was there as my friend, and Peter had agreed to take a friend to the discussion. I didn't hire him. I asked him to come as a friend, so I didn't betray anyone. I can't believe you betray your husband with such a quibble. He's my ex-husband. We already got divorced, so we're strangers now. Do you want to get alimony even if you have to make a foul play? Yes, because it's the best way to get revenge on the ex-husband who had cheated on me. Isn't it a natural thing to do? Anyway, 
It's true that you cheated Peter on this one, so don't charge us alimony. It will cause trouble when we build our house. Hmm. Will a man who is unemployed and in debt build a house? What? Unemployed? Wait, don't you know? About what? Right before we got married, his parents' business was going under and has been in the red. They've been trying to cover the loss by borrowing money in his name, but they couldn't put the company together and ended up in bankruptcy. What? Bankruptcy? Peter was also working for his parents' company, so he lost his job and ended up having in debt. Oh my. Peter pretended to go to work even after he lost his job, so I found out about his unemployment and debt just a couple of months ago. No way! In the beginning, he was looking for a place where he could borrow more money even if he was unemployed so I wouldn't find out, and he was living on a new loan. But he finally became unable to find places to borrow money, and then he started using the money I had saved for our marriage. When I noticed that my saving decreased little by little, I questioned Peter, he confessed. So, you started nagging him because... I couldn't let him stay unemployed. I was just saying things regarding unemployment and the settlement of a debt. Oh no! The amount of debt is huge, and he's still unemployed if he's not working, isn't he? I think it's impossible to build a house. Oh, but... That's right! What? We can go bankrupt to make it a wash! Yes, we can do that! Bankruptcy? If you do so, to buy a brand new house, you will have to pay all at once in cash. What? All at once? Yes. Also, it'll be hard to get a credit card if you go bankrupt. What? Then it's impossible to build a house! That's what I've been telling you. Shut up! Don't talk to me like that! Huh? We're friends now, so help me! Why do I have to help you? Please help me! We are friends, right? I didn't know anything about his debt and unemployment, so I quit my job to be a housewife. So I'm also unemployed. How should we live our life? I don't know. You're just my ex-husband's mistress, so I'm not contacting you as a friend. My lawyer, also my friend, will be in touch with you, so please pay alimony properly. Good luck. Wait, please help me! Bye. I'm very busy preparing for living alone, so I don't have time to waste. See you. Wait, Lily, hey! Goodbye. I got my car back from Helen and Peter thanks to Miguel, a lawyer and they agreed to pay alimony and all the money they've used on their dates and installments. By the way, Helen and Peter broke up and got divorced within a month. After the divorce, Peter contacted me saying he wanted to get back with me, but of course I said no. It seems now he's a job hopper working part-time and paying debt and alimony. Ray! Ray! Answer right now! Yes, I apologize for keeping you waiting. You're still as slow as ever! What business do you have today? Did you go to greet your fiancé and father? And what of it? Your fiancé, what's his name? You mean Danny? Yes, give me Danny's contact information. Wh why? Just tell me already! The reason doesn't matter, does it? It does matter. Please tell me your purpose. If you have something to say to him, I'll let him know. Otherwise, there's no need to tell you. He's going to marry you, isn't he? Yes, but what's it to you? The man who becomes your husband will be my brother-in-law. He will become family, you know. Isn't it normal to want to know the person's contact information? That is... If you get it, just tell me already. But Camila, if you have something to discuss with him, please tell me. I apologize, but I cannot tell you his contact information. Ugh, it's so frustrating! You can't tell me? Is there a reason for that? Are you trying to hide something from me? Explain it so I can understand. Camila, you always have to be above me, don't you? Well, it's natural, isn't it? I'm the older sister. You're the younger sister. It's been that way since we were little. 
You always took away my favorite toys. No matter how hard I tried, you never acknowledged me. You always complained about everything I did. So what? What does that have to do with anything? Right now, I'm asking you to give me your fiancé's contact information. I don't want to hear your old stories. So, I refuse. Because I don't want him to be treated the way I was. I don't want you to meet him if possible. <laughs> don't make me laugh so much. Complaining about toys being taken away, being treated like a child. I just want to know what kind of person is going to be your husband. He's probably just the third class ordinary guy anyway. No, that's not true. He's- <sighs> Just be quiet. I know he's a worthless man for choosing you as his partner. As your older sister, I just wanted to see what kind of person I'll be dealing with as my brother-in-law. It's not like I'm trying to harass you or anything. Why do you go so far as to be hostile towards me? I'm not being hostile, really. But speaking of your fiancé, what kind of person is he? What do you mean? You can't say. Is he so embarrassing that you want to hide him that bad? You don't think I know? You took advantage of my absence to come and say hello, didn't you? That's... You checked my schedule with my subordinates at work and went to see our parents when I wasn't around, right? Well, yes. I apologize. I did set a date to go greet them when you weren't around. Finally! You admitted it, huh? I was actually at home that day because my plans changed. Of course, I was hiding and watching his behavior. As expected, he doesn't seem to be much of a man, right? Yes, you're right. Ray, when you get married, go somewhere far away. I won't go. It's already been decided that he will work at Father's company. We'll be seeing you even after we get married. I thought you'd finally get married and leave the house. I'm gonna kick you out. So, I'm still in the way, huh? <laughs> Just kidding. Really? Uh, by the way, when is the wedding? It's in ten days. Um, Camila. What is it? Don't do anything weird, okay? Weird? Like what? No, nothing. Will you come to the wedding? Of course. I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad to hear that. Camila! Are you still drunk, Camila? What's your problem? What was that earlier? What? You interrupted the wedding. Coming in with a white wedding dress while we were exchanging vows? It's such an inappropriate and outrageous behavior for you. And on top of that, you were drunk. Oh, come on. I'm sorry, okay? Are you still drunk? It's supposed to be a happy day. Well, wasn't it entertaining? You meant it as entertainment? You caused a commotion and harassed the guests. In the end, you were kicked out of the venue by father, right? Were you trying to ruin the wedding? Father was furious. Mother was laughing, though. She understood it was just entertainment, right? But no one else was laughing. Not even relatives or friends. Not even our father. Father? That's not good. I was just trying to liven things up, you know. So true. It was like a rehearsal for my own wedding. I mean, I should be getting married soon too, right? I was just thinking what kind of dress to wear at my own wedding in a fancy venue, and I got so excited thinking about it. That's why you acted that way. I'm sorry for my behavior. You're my sister, so you'll forgive me, right? Rehearsal, you say? No matter what your intentions were, Father was furious. Even if you're his daughter, he said he couldn't forgive you. Father wouldn't really be that angry with me. After all, I'm the one who's going to inherit his company as his real daughter. It has nothing to do with you, a complete stranger who was abandoned as a baby. Yes, it's true that I was abandoned as a child. We're not blood-related. But father and mother, who raised me with love as their own, are my family. You can think that way as much as you want. In reality, it's me who shares the blood connection. I'm the only one. You're just a spare for when something happens to me. Yes, I don't care if I'm your replacement, but I won't forgive your behavior at the wedding. What difference does it make if you don't forgive me? I don't care about you at all. Just do your best so you won't be abandoned by your fiancé. What do you mean? If he works for father and leaves you, you will have no relationship with our family. You got married and left home, so of course, right? What? What do I have to do for you to recognize me as family? I've been trying so hard all this time. Your efforts are worthless. It's something commoners do. Just do your best not to be abandoned, okay? Camila! You're so noisy. Do you need something? What are you thinking? 
Whatever I'm thinking is none of your business. Don't interfere. It's not just my business. Are you trying to seduce my husband? Please stop. I'm going to tell father. <laughs> what are you saying now? Did your husband say something? He didn't say anything. He knows his place. Then how do you know? Are you just trying to pick a fight? It's not a false accusation. He was unusually drunk last night, sleeping on the sofa. He kept mumbling in his sleep. So what? It's your husband sleep talking. It's none of my concern. I don't have time for this. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but sometimes he said Camila. Maybe he has a mistress with that name? Cheating right after getting married? How daring. It's not like that. Even if he were in trouble, he wouldn't say anything to me. But I knew there was something, so I checked his work bag. My, my. I can't believe you would go through someone's bag, even if it was your husband. How vulgar. I don't want to think of you as my sister. So did you find anything? In his bag, there were harassing flyers and a large amount of documents relating to handling complaints. You did all this, didn't you? Do you have any evidence for that? Yes, I do. I didn't want to, but I used father's authority and confronted the people at his company. They admitted that Camila's subordinates were responsible for the harassing flyers and the vicious emails of complaints. They even confessed to using it as leverage to threaten him. Threaten? They told him to choose Camila and abandon me if he didn't want to suffer any more harm. When I heard that, I couldn't believe my ears. Is that really true? It's the truth. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? We may not be blood related, but we're family. Why would you do such terrible things? Because you looked so happy. I can't stand to see that expression on your face. It makes me sick. How dare you, a dirty orphan, be married and happy before me? I will never forgive you. You're a complete mistake. A mistake? Yes, a mistake. You, a filthy abandoned child of unknown origin, are not family to us. So, you tried to steal him away from me? Yes. I wanted to ruin your happiness. You, a despicable orphan, should be groveling in the dirt and bowing down to us. Just to make me suffer? Tormenting him for such a stupid reason. I can't believe it. I despise you. Say whatever you want. If you would just disappear from my sight, I wouldn't have to waste any more time on you. Disappear? Quit your job and go away somewhere far away. That man, too. So that's what you want. That's what I'm considering, too, ever since the wedding. Yes, clever for you. I don't like it, but I can't bear to see him continue to break down. I apologize to father, but if that stops your harassment... Is that so? So when? When will you quit your job and go somewhere far away? With this, the next president of the company will be decided as me. My wish has finally come true, hasn't it? I couldn't be happier. Do you really... Do you really hate me that much, Camila? Despite all my efforts to please you since we were children, why do you hate me so much? Well, you see, it's because you're more talented than me. The next president of the company is me. That's already been decided. I can't have someone who's more capable than me getting in my way. So, I want you to go somewhere unknown. I've never liked you, the way you excel at everything. I used to be a real crybaby. I knew I couldn't get in the way of father or you. It's the result of my constant efforts. You have always been talented since childhood, excelling in both academics and sports. But if you don't work hard without relying on talent, you will lose to someone who has worked hard. Don't speak so arrogantly. I'm the one who stands at the top. I'm the only daughter of a major conglomerate's chairman, you know. I'm guaranteed a position without even trying. Effort is something only poor people do. I've always hated how you worked hard and received praise from father and mother. It just makes me furious. I understand. I don't know what father will say, but I will quit the company and move away. I will cut ties with you. Oh, really? I'm glad. So when are you moving? Within this month. Even without you, I'll grow the company on my own. Just watch from afar somewhere. Ray, you still haven't moved yet? You're still as indecisive as ever. Moving requires a little more preparation. I'm currently in the process of finding a new place, so could you wait a little longer? By the way, I know it sounds crazy, but is it true that you're talking to a lawyer about me? Yes, 
I'm consulting with a lawyer about how my sister is harassing my husband. You shameless! It's absurd to talk to a third party about family issues. Don't you think it's more absurd to stalk your sister's husband? Turning to a lawyer because you can't solve the problem yourself? Sounds like something a stupid commoner would do. You're the worst. If you're going this far, I'll get even. Get even? I'll tell all my friends about it. Um, I don't think that would be considered revenge. In fact, your insanity will just spread to everyone. Although I feel like everyone already knows. <laughs> You're so annoying! I'm going to spread it around. You should be ashamed. Anyway, Ray. Yes, Camila? You are going to convince your husband. Convince him? For what? To go out with me, of course. What are you talking about? If that man doesn't obey me, I'm going to ruin your reputations. Are you okay with that? Feel free to do as you please. Is it okay to lose your reputation? The people at the company and our friends know us sisters well. Hm. You'll lose that calm soon enough. Oh, right. There's one more thing. What now? I might be getting engaged. It looks like a marriage proposal will be decided soon with the second son of a big company. How about that? Are you surprised? Yes, I am. Camila, while you're about to get engaged, you were trying to get your hands on my husband? I don't understand what you're thinking. Of course. It's just another way to harass you. Now you lose your place. You're unbelievable. Do you think it's okay to cause trouble for those around you just to harass me? Of course it's okay. I come from a noble family and I'm an outstanding person. I can do whatever it takes to achieve my goals. Both you and your husband are foolish. You should know whose side to take when you think about it for a minute. Your husband is such a stupid man for not obeying me. Say whatever you want. If you don't change that attitude, you'll face the consequences. Oh, Ray! Long time no see! Camila? It's been two years, hasn't it? Are you doing well? I'm doing well, but do you have any business with me? It's not that big of a deal, but I heard rumors about you, you know? Hmm. They say you and your husband started a company together. It's probably nothing special, but I was just curious about how things are going lately. As your older sister, I'm worried, you know. Be grateful. You don't need to worry about me, Camila. It's none of your business. The company is doing well. Is that all you wanted? If that's all, I'm busy, so excuse me. W wait a minute! Can't you believe that I'm actually worried about you? Thank you for your concern, Camila. Well then, that's all for now. I've been telling you to wait, haven't I? I asked about your recent updates, so you should ask about mine, too. Honestly, you have no common sense. Yes, yes. So, Camila, how have things been for you lately? Are you talking about the company? Of course it's going well. Thanks to me, of course. And also, my engagement with the second son of a major corporation is going well, too. Everything is going smoothly. My life has always been smooth, but lately it's been fantastic. It's going too well, almost scary. Is that so? Well, I'm glad to hear that. But it's strange, isn't it? What do you mean, strange? I heard from father that your company is in trouble. What? There's no way it's in trouble. Sure, the numbers might be down, but it's nothing I can't handle. It's impossible for our father's company to go under. That cannot happen. I'm more concerned about my wedding than the company. Oh, congratulations. I want to have the most luxurious celebrity wedding in the world. A wedding that'll make people all over the world jealous. Should I rent out a first-class hotel? Or maybe a luxurious cruise ship? Or how about renting a private jet to transport the guests? Invite all relatives and friends and have a lively party. Hey, don't you think it's wonderful? It's impossible. What? What did you just say? I said it's impossible. Who are you talking to like that? What do you mean it's impossible? No guests will come. What? what are you talking about? How would you know something like that? Don't you understand, Camila? Of course I don't understand, because that's impossible. Camila, everyone, relatives and friends, they all hate you. Even when you contact them, they don't get back to you, do they? Come to think of it, they don't reply. Why is that? What did I do? It's because of your disgraceful behavior at my wedding two years ago. That's the reason. But that's... I was trying to liven up the wedding! You were making a fool of yourself. Everyone knows it was harassment towards me. That's why no one will attend your wedding. 
In fact, even if you contact them, they will ignore you. That's a lie! For such a petty reason? But there's no reply to your messages, right? Yeah, there's no reply. I thought it was strange. This is what you deserve, Camila. Just because of that? You think that I would give up? That's right. If you miss the wedding, you'll be fined. Then everyone will have to attend. <sighs> this is ridiculous. That's exactly what they'll ignore, right? No. I'll use whatever means necessary. Even my father's prestige or anything else. I will make this wedding a success, no matter what. Ray! Ray! Where are you right now? What are you doing? I'm working at the office. What? Office? Don't you know today is the wedding day? Oh, today was the day, huh? Congratulations. Well then, excuse me. Wait, wait! I didn't ask for just a superficial greeting like that. Why? Why aren't you at the wedding? I invited you, didn't I? I was invited, but I didn't say I would go. Do you think such absurd logic would be acceptable? I rented out a luxury hotel. I paid a fortune. Do you really think you can refuse the invitation and get away with it? There will be a fine. Pay the fine. We didn't make that promise. I'll make sure you pay. If you refuse, I'll consult with a lawyer. Why? How could this be? I invited 200 people and no one showed up. Father or mother, relatives or friends. Not even people from work. What's going on? You must have planned this. I didn't plan anything, but I know why no one showed up. Shall I tell you, Camila? N no. I don't need to hear it from you. I'll figure it out myself. Fine then. I'll take my leave. Wait! Wait, please. Explain it to me. I can't accept that father and mother didn't come. Well, then I'll tell you. Mother didn't come because father was really mad at her. Why? Mother is such a nice person. Mother was convenient for you, wasn't she, Camila? What? Don't speak ill of my mother! Mother doted on you. You know how they say silly kids are cute? Mother showed extreme affection towards you, her real daughter, who was ignorant and naive. It's only natural for a mother to love her own child, right? But the way she took care of you was beyond that. Parents normally scold their children when they do something or cause trouble for others. But somehow, Mother didn't do anything at all. It seemed like she had abandoned discipline and education. In a way, you could be seen as a victim. I don't understand what you're saying at all. Stop speaking ill of my mother! Do you remember what happened when you caused the assault incident? What does that matter? Mother did everything she could to cover it up. Yes, that's why Mother tried to bribe the police. It got leaked to the media. Do you know how much father and the company executives had to clean up your mess? I don't know! You probably didn't, did you? You and mother just locked yourselves in the room and cried. There was nothing else we could do! I was scared, you know? Scared? It was you who got drunk and caused the incident, injuring the driver, right? So what's your point? We managed to cover it up back then, and we'll surely manage to cover it up this time too! Are you expecting someone else to clean up your mess again? Even during the incident, the media swarmed the houses of company executives and relatives, causing them significant damage and trouble. But it was Father and I who went around apologizing to everyone, bowing our heads. Well, of course. You're family, right? Oh? I thought I'm not family. Father is my family. And bringing up past incidents like this, is it a boast to you? It's not a boast. That's why they won't attend your wedding. No way. Father's relatives and company executives won't attend because of the past incidents, right? Then what about my subordinates? You always looked down on them and treated them like fools. As a boss, you were the worst, Camila. You forced your subordinates to clean up after your mistakes as a matter of course. But that's their job! No, it's not. They were working overtime to cover for you in addition to their regular duties, you know? And yet... You didn't even reflect on your actions and kept going out drinking, right? Anyone would be angry. It's only natural for them to abandon you. That's not true. So, so what about my friends? They should come, right? Face reality, Camila. None of them will come. Why? Why not? Your friends from the past are all grown up now. They have families and are working seriously. Do you remember what you said to them? I don't remember saying anything horrible. You said, You live in a tiny house and have a poor life. What's wrong with that? 
It's a fact, and I didn't say anything wrong. Think about how they would feel if they were told that. They felt insulted and said they can't associate with you anymore. No one will come today. But even if that was true, it's strange that no one's coming. We invited a lot of relatives and friends from the groom side, too. I told you, didn't I? No one is coming. But why? I hear the groom is similar to you. Similar? How so? Acting high and mighty and doing whatever he pleases. That's not true. That's why guests from the groom's side aren't coming either. Family, relatives, everyone. That's a lie. Besides, what do you know about the groom? I heard it from father. That's right! Father! Where is father? Father should definitely come. Our father is not coming either. He knows all about your actions up until now. That's not true! It's true. Even though he knew, because you're his own daughter, he was protecting you. But he said he has reached his limit. It's a lie. There's no way father would abandon me, right? Lies. It's all lies. To be abandoned by both mother and father, hated by relatives and friends. Did you not notice until it came to this? I've always wondered why I couldn't contact anyone. Finally, you figured it out, huh? Everyone has blocked you, Camila. I don't understand. Why would anyone block me? Oh, I see. I get it now. It's you, isn't it? Are you saying it's my fault? The only one who hasn't blocked me is you because you're the mastermind behind it all. Oh, that. I thought I would finally say what I wanted to say before cutting ties with you. I don't like being pushed around. Camila, I am happy, unlike you. The small company we started together as a couple is doing well, with more business partners coming in. It's thanks to the support of father and relatives. Why? How could this happen? I'm the one who's been through so much. Why is it just you that's happy? It's your own fault. Maybe you should learn a thing or two about social behavior and how to interact with people despite your pride and stubbornness due to your age. Anyway, this is the last straw. We're not family, so I'll be blocking your contact information. Don't you dare talk to me like that! Goodbye. It seems that nobody attended my sister's wedding, and it's become a hilarious anecdote. Despite my repeated warnings, my sister's attitude didn't improve at all, and she was eventually ousted from her position as the CEO and even kicked out of the company. It seems that the groom's parents' company didn't accept my sister and her husband either, and now they both work as day laborers. As for me, the company my husband and I started together is doing incredibly well, and we've even established a partnership with my father's company. We're launching a new business, too. I enjoy working every day so much. I'll give it my best today, too. Hannah, do you have time right now? You're probably free, right? I'll send you a few photos. There are a lot, so please look at them all carefully. I want to hear your thoughts on them. They're photos of wedding venues. Aren't they all lovely? Albert and I have decided to have our wedding, but we're not sure which venue to choose. I like the second venue, but they're all so attractive. Can you give me your opinion as a reference? Hey, did you not see my message? Are you ignoring me? Please reply. Which venue do you think is the best? Hey, answer me! Whatever. What do you mean, whatever? I told you to help me choose the best venue, didn't I? I was in a good mood until just now, and now it's ruined. This is the worst. What's with that attitude? It's your cute sister's wedding, you know. What's with that behavior? I can't believe it. You're not interested in your important sister's wedding? Of course not, idiot. Just choose whatever you want. Why? Why are you speaking so coldly? What? You don't get it if I don't say it that way? Did you forget what you did to me? What? I can't believe it. It's so ridiculous to explain, but Albert was originally dating me. You lied and told him that Hannah is cheating to make him believe you and forcibly separate us. At that time, Albert said terrible things to me too. Well, I guess that was all in the past. After you started dating seriously, Albert apologized for what he did, but I hated you more than him. So it was difficult to continue our relationship. Okay, okay. Also, you said you were pregnant at that time. 
Albert chose to take responsibility and marry you if that was the case and continue to date you, but it was all a lie. I can't believe my sister did something so stupid. I'm fed up with being your sister. After that incident, I cut off all ties with you. It seems that Albert has continued the relationship until today, poor thing. He's a stupid man if he goes ahead and marries you because he won't be able to escape. Even if you two ask which venue is best, I won't respond. It's obvious if you think about it normally, isn't it? It was just a little white lie from my sister, you know. Even if you were deceived, the misunderstanding has been cleared up, and in the end, Albert chose me instead of Hannah, so it's not my fault, it's Albert's, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I'm not the bad guy here, am I? Anyway, choosing a venue is fine, so which one do you like? As I said before, my recommendation is the second one, but Albert likes the third one. We went to visit them all, but I'm having a hard time deciding which one is the best. Hey, you're being pushy. I said I wouldn't choose, didn't I? So you can choose by yourself, can't you? Come on, can't you at least listen to my opinion? Oh, are you still holding a grudge against me for dating Albert? How long are you going to talk about the past? Isn't it already irrelevant? Just forget it. Don't keep playing the victim forever, okay? It's not just my fault, right? And just because I told a little lie he cheated on you? He wasn't interested in Hannah to begin with, was he? <laughs> Hannah and I may have similar faces, but our personalities are completely different. I can't stand it when you keep dwelling on it like this. Why don't you learn from my personality? Then maybe you can get a boyfriend, get married, and live a happy life, right? <laughs> well, maybe that's impossible for Hannah anyway. Oh, I get so frustrated just talking to you. My head is starting to ache. Can you stop making sarcastic comments all the time? You're not even interested in my opinions, are you? You just want to show off that you're marrying Albert. The wedding venue doesn't matter. You can just do whatever you want. It has nothing to do with me. Even if you didn't say anything, we would still get married. It's already decided. Sorry for stealing Albert. You must be so jealous, right? I do feel a little bad, but just a little bit. It's not a big deal. Stop being so persistent. But make sure to give us a proper cash gift, okay? I sent you a few pictures, but every venue is so expensive. Both Albert and I don't have much savings, so we're counting on everyone's cash gifts. <laughs> we have a lot of friends, so we're inviting a lot of people and planning to receive many cash gifts. It's good that I have a sociable personality, unlike Hannah. When I told people I was getting married, they all said they would come to the wedding. If it were for you, you wouldn't have many friends to invite to the wedding. <laughs> Of course, we're also counting on your cash gift. Give us more than the average, okay? It's your lovely little sister's request, so please don't disappoint me. You wouldn't dare to not give us a cash gift, are you silly? I asked Dad and Mom to give us a lot of cash gifts too, so Hannah, please do the same. I'm not giving you any. I don't want to celebrate your wedding, are you stupid? Don't contact me anymore, goodbye. Oh, by the way, the wedding venue? You didn't give me your opinion. Hannah, congratulations on your marriage. I can't believe you and my son got back together. When I heard my son had broken up with you, I was really depressed. I'm so happy that you guys reconciled and to have your wedding in such a beautiful venue, you should have told me earlier. I saw the photos of you trying on dresses and they looked great on you. You looked amazing. Can we meet before the wedding? I want to give you a gift. Dorothy. Um... How can I put this? I didn't reconcile with Albert. You must have misunderstood. What are you talking about? I just saw the photos. You took some with Albert wearing a wedding dress, and he showed me some venue photos. You two are getting married in two months, right? I'm not the one marrying Albert. It's my identical twin sister. I think the pictures are of my sister and Albert. We look exactly alike, just our faces. What? Your twin sister? I'm sorry for getting your hopes up. I only found out about the marriage a week ago, and I don't get along with my sister, so I tried not to think about it too much. You didn't hear it from Albert? I didn't hear anything. He just gave me the pictures because he was getting married. I saw the pictures and thought it was you, which is why I contacted you today. I knew you had a sister, Hannah, but I didn't know she was an identical twin. You two look so much alike, I didn't even notice in the pictures. Oh, I see. You can't tell from the pictures, can you? I don't know what to say. I hadn't told Dorothy before, but the reason Albert and I broke up was because of my twin sister. What do you mean? Can you tell me more? 
Well, my sister told Albert a lie that I was cheating on him. He believed her and didn't listen to my explanation. He trusted her more than me. What a foolish son he was. Eventually, the misunderstanding was cleared up, but then my sister said she was pregnant. Albert decided to take responsibility and continue to date my sister, but the pregnancy was a lie. They kept dating and apparently decided to get married. That's why I haven't been on good terms with my sister. I thought I had cut ties with her. I'm sorry, Hannah. I can't believe my son was so foolish. He only told me that he and Hannah broke up. I never expected anything like this. Dorothy, there's no reason for you to apologize. The worst one in this situation is my sister. Albert was just deceived. Dorothy has always hoped for our reconciliation, but it didn't go as she wanted. I also need to apologize for my sister's behavior. No, Hannah isn't at fault. It's because of my son and your sister. I can't believe he was fooled by such a lie and broke up with Hannah. I want to make it up to you in some way. That's not necessary for Dorothy to apologize. It's all in the past, and it's fine. I'm not bothered by it, and Albert already apologized too. We've been to sweet shops together a few times as sweets buddies, right? How about a sweets catalog? I found a great one recently. Can I have it sent to you? What? Sweets? That sounds intriguing, but I can't accept it though. It's not Dorothy's fault after all. Hannah, don't hold back. Actually, my son showed me a photo and I just assumed you and him had gotten back together. I wanted to talk to you and made a reservation at a famous cafe. We were just talking about wanting to go there a little while ago. How about going there? What, that famous cafe? Yes, exactly. I was able to get a reservation there, but maybe you don't want to go with me anymore now that you're not with Albert. How about going with a good friend instead? Thank you, Dorothy. Don't say such lonely things. If that's the case, I'll just go with you normally. I'm happy that you made the reservation. Let's go together. When did you make the reservation? Hannah, are you okay with going with me? Let's go together. Let's put Albert aside for now. We're sweets friends, aren't we? We became friends because we both have a sweet tooth. Even if I can't see Albert anymore, it would be sad if I couldn't see Dorothy. Let's continue our friendship from now on. You're so kind. Thank you. Let's definitely go together. I'm looking forward to the day. Also, there's something I want to tell Dorothy as a friend. This is good news. What is it? Let's talk about it over tea on the day. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm sorry for what my son did, but I'm happy to continue our friendship with Hannah like this. Me too. Let's keep in touch, Dorothy. Let's meet at the cafe then. Hey, Hannah? I've been messaging you so many times since then, but you never responded. The wedding is today. Haven't you forgotten, have you? The relatives are gathering soon. Will you make it on time? Have you prepared the wedding gift? Uh, I've been a bit busy, you know. I didn't respond to your message. Come on, get it together! You should have guessed from the lack of response. Hey, until when are you going to keep saying that? It's the wedding day, after all. Don't be stubborn and just congratulate the bride, your cute little sister. How long are you going to be angry? You have a really unpleasant personality. Well, what do you say? What's the matter? What do you mean? Why don't you say what you mean clearly? Don't tell me you don't know where the venue is. I'll send you the location of the venue again, so don't be late. It would be embarrassing if your older sister were late. Well, do as you please. I'm busy too today, so I'll hang up now. Hey, wait a minute! Do you understand me? What do you mean by busy? You're coming to the wedding, right? Don't forget the wedding gift! Could you keep it down? Where are you now? How much longer will it take you? Tell me in detail how many minutes it will take to get to the venue. Hurry up! Stop making so much noise, please. It's your fault for not showing up when you were supposed to. It's causing trouble for the venue. Also, neither dad nor mom have shown up yet. Are you coming with them? And uncles and aunts and all the relatives have not gathered yet. Do you know what's going on? Are they all taking the same bus or caught in traffic? I haven't said a word about attending your wedding. What? I just told you to bring the money envelope, right? You're just saying things on your own, aren't you? And no relatives are there? Isn't it obvious that everyone is here? What? Why? The wedding is starting already. What are you doing? Even the staff at the venue is urging you to come here. Come here quickly. 
everyone isn't going over there. Today is my wedding day and all the people who you're relying on for the wedding gift, dad, mom, and all the relatives are here with me. Huh? It's your wedding day? Today is my wedding day. What do you mean? I don't understand. I mean it literally. Today is my wedding day and all my relatives are attending. Why don't you call your mother and confirm? Wait, I really can't comprehend this. I can't keep up with the information. Are you saying that you're getting married today? And you're having a wedding ceremony? I'm sorry, I can't process this. I mean what I said. You may be getting married today too, but this is my wedding. Did you think I wanted to marry Albert all this time? That's old news. I didn't owe you any explanation, but I started dating a colleague from work who confessed to me, and then he proposed to me, and we decided to get married. Why did you keep me in the dark about this? I told you about my marriage plans. Why couldn't you have told me about your boyfriend? Do I really need to tell you? I thought I had cut ties with you and our sisterhood. And if I introduce him to you, you'll just use it as an opportunity to harass me again and tell him lies. He won't be fooled like Albert was, but I'm tired of being manipulated by you. So I don't owe it to you to tell you who I'm dating or who I'm marrying. What? That's just an excuse. And who's this guy from work? You've been obsessed with Albert for so long, haven't you? You've been looking at me with envy all this time, haven't you? What a ridiculous delusion. You've always been making fun of me, haven't you? Is it really so proud that you took Albert away from me? I don't care about Albert anymore. And why did you choose to have your wedding on the same day as mine? I told you the date of my wedding, right? You did it on purpose, didn't you? What a terrible person you are. Stop joking. Don't give me that. I'm the one who's serious here. Maybe the overlapping dates were just a coincidence. I have no interest in your wedding, so I didn't even remember the date. <laughs> Don't mess with me. But wait a minute. Your family and relatives are all attending your wedding, right? So what about us? No one can attend your wedding. <laughs> Everyone is here with us. Too bad. You invited a lot of people hoping to get some wedding gifts. Shut up! Hey, are Albert's parents also there with you? Yes, that's right. Albert's parents and all the relatives are here with us. What? That's ridiculous! Even if my family is one thing, there's no reason for Albert's relatives to attend your wedding. It doesn't matter. Calm down, calm down. The reason they're attending my wedding is because they want to. Dorothy told everyone about the truth between you and Albert. What did she tell them? What did she convey to them? How you lied to him, deceived him, and took him away from me. How you lied about being pregnant just to keep him. She told everyone everything. And they couldn't celebrate the two of you with a clear conscience anymore. Then they sympathized with me and decided to attend our wedding. It's too bad, isn't it? Especially Dorothy, who said Hannah is an important sweets friend and wanted to attend my wedding. Why did you have to go and do that? If you hadn't said anything, everyone would have come to my wedding. So it's not my fault. I just told Dorothy the truth and she spread it to the family. I didn't ask her to do that. She was really mad because she used to be friends with me without Albert, and she can't forgive her own son or you for what you did to me, so it's all your fault. I just told the truth, you know. I didn't do anything wrong. It was just a little lie. It's Albert's fault for falling for it, and it's your fault for not being trustworthy. It's not my fault. Do you still think it's not your fault? I'm appalled that I'm related to someone like you. Why did it have to turn out like this? This is too cruel. And none of our relatives came. What should I do? I can't find the words. I feel like I'm hyperventilating. And seriously, doesn't it seem ridiculous for the groom's mother to attend her ex-girlfriend's wedding? Is she crazy or something? Well, if you ask me, you're the one who's crazy. <laughs> it's a personal choice which wedding to attend, isn't it? Did you even greet Dorothy or your father after deciding to get married? I bet you didn't. Dorothy said, we don't need a foolish son and an ill-mannered daughter-in-law. It's better to attend our friend's wedding. What a joke. It's pointless to greet them anyway since Albert and I are the ones getting married. It's comments like that that make you seem ill-mannered. I wonder why we're so different when we're sisters and share the same blood. Shut up! Well, even if the seats for the relatives might be empty, there will be a lot of friends coming, right? You were bragging about how sociable you are, right? It's good that you have a lot of friends. Just collect a lot of congratulatory money from your friends and forget about us. Certainly many friends came, but since there isn't any relatives here, the seats are empty and awkward. People have been making noise outside the venue since earlier. Well, that's understandable, right? <laughs> I've never heard of a wedding venue without any parents from both families, let alone any relatives. They must be wondering what happened. If no relatives come, everyone might get bored and leave. What should we do, Hannah? Hey, can't you at least ask some people to come over here? 
please, before everyone leaves. I'll talk to them, but as I've said before, it's up to each individual to decide where to go. I wonder if anyone at this point would want to come to your side? I don't think so. Well, I wish them luck. It would be nice if at least one person wanted to come. Please ask them properly. Our wedding will be ruined if nobody comes, and we won't even receive any gifts. What will we do then? I don't care what happens to you. I have to get ready to enter soon, and I won't be checking my messages again today. Bye. Anna, help me. Oh, you seem quite humble now. What's wrong? I'll listen to you, but did your extravagant wedding go well? Mine was a lovely wedding. That's good to hear. My wedding was a disaster, though. Not a single relative attended in the end. They didn't come because they were all at your wedding. So when my friends asked me why the family seats were empty, I told them that everyone was at Hannah's wedding. They were all surprised and left. Isn't that terrible? They didn't even leave a gift. My bad feeling came true. Maybe your behavior is to blame. They must have thought that you did something wrong and left. If they were just friends, they would have stayed anyway. You didn't even receive any gifts. Maybe even my friends didn't want to be there. Yeah, maybe that's it. <sighs> it's just not exciting at all. You're not yourself. Usually you'd argue back more. You're really down. What happened after that? What went wrong? You know, I told you when I sent the photos, but we chose an expensive wedding venue because we really wanted a nice place. Neither Albert nor I have money, but we thought we could pay for everything with the wedding gifts, so we invited as many relatives and friends as we could and planned to pay for everything with the gifts received on the day. But nobody gave us any gifts, so we're in trouble. We can't pay the money. We might have to borrow to pay for it. Wait, you mean you didn't pay anything until the day of the wedding? You plan to pay everything in full on the day? That's ridiculous. It's impossible to pay for a wedding with just gifts. Why did you choose to pay on the day of the wedding? I did pay some of it, you know. But what else could I do? We couldn't afford to pay for such a luxurious wedding venue by ourselves. But we really wanted to have the wedding there. As I told you, both Albert and I don't have any savings. That's why we invited so many people and asked for their congratulatory money. But in reality, almost no one showed up. The venue was empty until the very end. It's just too much. Nobody came? So did you two have the ceremony alone? No, we didn't go ahead with the ceremony. There's no point in having a wedding with no attendees, right? We canceled it before it even started. As a result, no food was served, and my dress was taken off immediately, and yet they demanded we pay for the entire wedding cost. It's just outrageous. It's only natural. <laughs> the wedding venue has prepared everything for the wedding, assuming that it would be held. It's only fair to pay for what was prepared. I bet the venue didn't expect that there wouldn't be any attendees. Come on, they didn't do anything. We didn't even toast, and I didn't eat a single bite of food. Even if you didn't eat the food, the catering for all the attendees would have been prepared, so the cost has already been incurred. And as for the dress, you only wore it briefly, but it still incurred a cost. And yet they expect us to pay the full amount? Isn't that a bit stingy? It's not a matter of being stingy, I don't think. Honestly, you seem so ignorant of how things work. I feel sorry for the wedding venue. Well, I guess it's okay to pay for the dress, but Albert and I don't have any money. I thought I'd ask my mom to pay for it, but she's not answering the phone. My mom attended my wedding, you know. She's not going to answer your calls. And even if she did, I doubt she'd pay for anything. I also tried calling Albert's mom, but she didn't pick up either. So I had to go to your house pretending to be you. I thought it would work since we have similar faces, but I was immediately caught, and the person even threw water at me and kicked me out. Can you believe it? <laughs> Dorothy is the best. Oh, by the way, Dorothy told me that she's blocking your calls. And the fact that she can tell the difference between you and me just by looking at her faces, she's really the best friend I could ask for. I might even fall in love with her. <laughs> it's no time to joke around here. Can't you see how much I'm struggling? I can't believe you and that old lady. By the way, how much did you receive as a wedding gift? There were participants who originally planned to come, and you're also receiving a gift from Albert's relatives, right? You should have received a considerable amount. Can't you at least share the portion of what was meant for Albert's relatives that we were supposed to receive? Don't you have any intention to help your sister in need? Can't you give me a little bit of it? What are you saying? Wedding gifts are meant to express congratulations and well wishes. They are given to bless us. I'm not giving you anything. There were no wedding gifts meant for you in the first place. Why would you say such a cruel thing? If you hadn't said unnecessary things to mom, the wedding wouldn't have been canceled and we would have received the wedding gifts. Then I wouldn't have to go to all of this trouble. Do you not care if your beloved sister ends up in debt hell? 
Stop talking nonsense. It's your fault that you did something stupid. Don't try to shift the blame to me. And I don't think of you as my cute little sister. Whether you fall into a pit of debt or not is none of my concern. Why don't you just focus on making things work with Albert? You're asking me to help you, your identical twin sister? You're being persistent, but I've already cut ties with you. You're not my sister anymore. I had to prepare for my honeymoon now, and I don't have time to keep talking to you. Is that enough? Wait a minute, please help me! You're the only one I can rely on now! I don't want to be bothered with your problems. Mom and Dad, as well as Albert's family, probably won't help you either. You'll have to manage on your own. Goodbye! Help me! Hannah! The younger sister disposed of as many of her belongings as possible to raise cash and put it towards the cost of the wedding venue. Naturally, Albert also organized his possessions and somehow managed to clear the high payments. However, it seems the amount paid was not divided equally in half. Albert expressed his satisfaction about this, while the younger sister complained about the fact that Albert did not sell his beloved car in the end. From there, cracks began to appear in their relationship and they continued to argue and bicker. Eventually, they ended up breaking up, just half a month after that ill-fated wedding. Their marriage had effectively ended before it had even begun. Despite hearing about this, no one in their family extended a helping hand to either of them, and that was only natural. As for me, I have no intention of remembering them anymore, and I ignore any messages or phone calls that come from them. I'm enjoying my own married life now. Hey! Are you angry at me? You don't call or text me at all, so... You already know that I had sex with your boyfriend, don't you? But it couldn't have been helped, because your boyfriend showed interest when I asked him out, and he never said no. It might be because I'm more attractive than you. It can't be helped, right? I stayed quiet and listened to you, and you said whatever you wanted to say. You had sex with my boyfriend and said that it couldn't have been helped? Because it's a fact. Are you making fun of me? Do you really think you can say such a thing? Don't you reflect on your actions at all? No, I don't. And why don't you try to be more creative so that you don't lose your boyfriend to me? Because you're like that. You get your boyfriend stolen over and over again by me. You... you do such stupid things, so... have no friends, do you? Everyone says that if they become your friend, they get their boyfriend stolen. You're a bitch! <laughs> I don't feel anything from whatever losers say. A female friend is nothing more than a draw for me. In the first place, if they have a problem with that, they should do something so they don't get their boyfriend stolen. But they blame me for not being able to do so. You're such a... For me, whether it belongs to someone or not, it doesn't matter. If I meet a man who's my type, I do whatever it takes to make him mine. What other woman can do this? I'm the only one, right? Now you know how attractive and good woman I am, don't you? Don't be silly. No, I'm serious. Besides, you and I have similar tastes in men, so I was attracted to your boyfriend this time too. I couldn't help myself. It seems that your bad habit haven't changed at all. The same thing happened when we were students. Oh, do you also remember? To tell you the truth, to steal your boyfriend, I wanted to go to the same university as you. But I couldn't have passed the test. Imagining going to the same university makes me sick. What? Do you really think so? Although I'm pretty like this. You're a real bitch, though. Don't be such a bad loser. Anyway, I ended up going to a different university, but I couldn't give up and entered a university located near your university. And at intercollegiate competitions, I got your boyfriend's contacts. This is what was happening. You never change. This time you did the same thing. You spied on me and stole my boyfriend. What's your intention? To steal my boyfriend, you followed me to university. And where I work this time. 
The obsession doesn't scare me, but makes me disgusted. What? Don't pretend to be tough. You also never change. You should have been disappointed by getting your boyfriend stolen, but pretended to be unaffected. This makes me irritated and makes me want to do more. You pretend to be a strong woman, and it gets on my nerves. But because of such charmless behavior of you, your boyfriends leave you. Huh? Men like charming women, like me. That's why you got your boyfriend stolen this time, too. You should show your charm like me, or miss the chance to get married. It's because you researched where I work, started working at the same place, and keep stealing my boyfriend. When will you stop doing such a stupid thing? I don't know. Well, it can't be helped. Because stealing someone's boyfriend is the only way for you to get a boyfriend. That's your only enjoyment of life, isn't it? That's too pitiful. Poor you. You're pretending to be strong and saying unnecessary things again. You're disgusting. No one likes a charmless old lady. By the way, you called me. So I ask you even though I don't want to. Where are you right now? What are you doing by getting a day off? Didn't our boss tell you? I called him and said I take a day off because I'm not feeling good today. And our boss said he'll pretend I was at work and I can take the day off. This is what he said. Not like someone. Our boss is kind. Now you're making eyes at the boss this time. You can't be helped. You're overthinking. I didn't do anything. Our boss did everything. Stop playing dumb. I don't care about you flattering our boss, but I don't want you to take a day off because of fake sickness. You have a lot of tasks that are due today, don't you? How are you going to deal with them? Besides, pretending to be at work while taking a day off will be a big problem. Even if you say that to me, I don't know anything about it. Our boss did everything, right? Oh, by the way, I can make you do all the tasks I have. That's what our boss said. So, for the poor co-worker who takes a day off due to sickness, do your best on the overtime work. Oh my... I can't believe you. So, bye! Hey you! Listen to me! I was proposed to by a president of a very famous company. It's such a big company that even ignorant people like you know. He is very rich and very good looking. Oh, congratulations. Of course, we'll have a very gorgeous wedding. He said I can wear as many wedding dresses as I want because I look good in any dress. We'll decorate the venue with lots of flowers and serve the most expensive meals. We'll also prepare a custom-made wedding cake. We'll make our wedding a great one, which ordinary people like you can't have. Thank you for telling me a lot about something I didn't ask and have no interest in. But weren't you going to marry the man who you stole from me? Stop kidding me. That could never happen. The disgusting guy who is stingy and superficial, so there's no way he's going to get ahead in life. I don't want to deal with such a man. I didn't need him anymore, so I dumped him. He was crying, so why don't you go comfort him? You might be able to get back together. Oh, really? Then did you leave the other men too? Oh, did you know that I had a lot of backups? Yes, I did. Hmm. I don't care. I also don't need them anymore. Anyways, I'll quit the company. I'm going to marry a rich man, so I don't need to work anymore. Now I'm on the victorious side. It's a waste of time to go to work, so I quit right away. What are you talking about? That's impossible. That's too selfish. We don't have enough people. You have to hire a replacement and then take over everything, don't you? You can't just quit. 
Actually, I can do so because our boss let me. He said, I'll take care of everything, so it's fine. And he accepted my request. He is your boss, isn't he? So you have to listen to him. And everything will be all right if you deal with the remaining tasks. You should be thankful to me. For you who keep being dumped by men, I gave a purpose in life which is to live for your career. You're really disgusting. <laughs> it's funny! It's pity that charmless woman who pretends to be strong is paid no attention by anyone. At most as a workaholic. So, please do your best. It doesn't matter to me. To your marriage, I don't have any interest. Before that, let's talk about our job for now. What? Why? As I said, I let you deal with all my tasks. I told you already, right? Anyways, I'm going to visit my fiancé's parents' house soon. I'll show you the pictures. Why? You don't need to. It seems his parents live in a very big house. That's great, isn't it? It'll be mine in the future. As I said, I have no interest in your marriage. We have to talk about our job first. You have to finish the tasks that you already started working on. Well, it's time for me to go to the hair salon, so bye! Wait! Thank you for your hard work. Look at this. This is my fiancé's house, and it's quite big, isn't it? I'm going to get married to such a rich man. What? Wait. Why are you at my parents' house? What? Don't say such a stupid thing. Being a bad loser and telling a lie is ugly. No, this is my house. And this is evidence, a picture that I took in front of my parents' house when I was a kid. See, the entrance is completely the same as the one in your picture, isn't it? Why? <laughs> Such a well-prepared joke. I'm not going to be tricked. It's not a joke. My family is an owner of the company which has many apparel brands across the country. Your fiancé had said the same thing, hadn't he? My fiancé is the son of a noble family, and he's the next president. Yes, so that's my brother. No way! You're lying. It's not a lie. I just showed you the picture, right? Oh my god. I didn't know you were born in such a noble family. Wait, does it mean I'll be your sister-in-law? I don't want you to be. So I'll do whatever it takes to prevent it. Don't you dare do anything you don't have to. You're such a disgusting woman. I've taken so long to find happiness. Don't ruin it. That's my line. Don't say you forgot about the things you've done to me. Since I was a student, I got my boyfriend stolen. From who? You forgot what you've done, and you're making a fuss. I'm quite mad at you. Do you know? People call this retribution. You're such a bitch. Don't bother me. I'll marry into a wealthy family, and all the assets of this house will be mine. If you say anything weird to your brother, you'll pay the price. I'll kick you out! That's scary. You finally showed your true personality. Anything weird, meaning what you've done for a long time? You spied on my boyfriends for a long time, stole him from me, and flattering with our boss. Which is a disgusting woman? Me or you? Shut up! And it seems you're misunderstanding. So I'll tell you. What? The next president is me, not my brother. What? What did you just say? Oh, don't you understand? I said the next president is me. My brother will be the vice president. No way! It's true. I'm smarter than him. So to get some experience, my father asked me to work at a subsidiary company by hiding who I really am. Of course, at the university, I studied management. But I can't get on-site experience without working there, right? That's why I'm working here like this. And I got a lot of experience. In three years, I'll be called back as the next president. Not my brother, 
but me. No way. That's a lie. Anyway, I'll contact my brother right now. What? By doing so, I can prove that I'm his sister. I have to ask him not to marry you. No, stop! I'm not going to stop. The marriage of the vice president and you is just a huge burden for our company. Because you are a woman who has an affair with your boss. What? I won't be tricked this time. While you were taking a day off, everyone was talking about you and our boss having an affair. No way! I don't know anything! Don't play dumb. Everyone knows everything. The boss's wife is mad and preparing to charge you much alimony. You should be prepared. I don't have such money! It doesn't matter. I'll tell you in advance. Don't rely on our family money. A bitch like you will never be allowed to marry my brother. You can't marry into a wealthy family. No way! Hey, you! I'll do whatever it takes. Please forgive me! Of course, everything you've done to me will be reported to my brother and parents. So please put your mind at ease. You're such a mean person! Hey, you! Wait! No, I didn't mean to hurt you. It was an impulse of the moment. You've brought it on yourself. For what you've done, you should accept the responsibility. No! You're unkind! Oh, if I can't marry into a wealthy family, I won't quit the company. I'll do my best, so please assist me in getting back to the company. Are you kidding me? I already hired a serious person to replace you. And even if you get back, you'll be looked at coldly by everyone. Can you bear with it? Ugh, that's... But, but, I can't pay alimony without working. Please, help me. Missed call. Hey, you! Missed call. Missed call. My brother found out Ella's true personality, that she's a slut who stole my boyfriend and had an affair with her boss, and they canceled their marriage. Our boss is caught having an affair, and he was reassigned. Ellis, who was charged a large amount of alimony, negotiated by herself to get back to the company. But the company rejected, because they can't hire someone who can't do their job, but just keeps causing problems. Of course, after giving up, she started job hunting, but it didn't go smoothly, and she paid alimony by borrowing money. She is now paying back the debt by working part-time. On her social media, opposite from the happy-go-lucky, ball-busting content she'd been posting, she posts complaints every day, such as she can't live with it, she can't live her life, and she is waiting for someone to help her out of such a poor situation.